fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and... And keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! It was near twilight when the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein at the mission. Their old friend, the Padre, who had been told of their approach by one of his Indian converts, met them at the door with a greeting. Welcome, my son. It's good to see you again, Padre. Will you not dismount? Thank you. Well, what brings you back to my humble mission? Not trouble, I hope. <laughs> no, Padre. I'm in need of silver bullets and horseshoes. I expected Jim, the man who makes them for me, to send you a supply. So I could pick it up without going out of my way. I received a letter from a man named Jim last week. He wrote that he would send a box of such supplies to the mission and ask me to hold it for you. The shipment would arrive on today's stagecoach. Look, dust cloud on trail. The stage is coming. The driver isn't sparing his horses. He must have me. see fellow lying on top. It must be the shotgun guard. Get there. Something Get there. wrong. Is the coach going to stop? Yes, the driver's setting his brakes. Padre! Padre! Say, who is that masked man? Do not be alarmed. He and the Indian are friends of mine. What ails your guard? He's dead. Dead? What happened? Two road agents slugged him. They held us up at the Telecourt Creek Bridge. Otto, climb up and take a look at the guard. Oh, let me do that. Otto. Driver, where is the bridge? Five miles west of here. They all who headed south along the creek bank after the holdup. Can you describe them? All I'm sure about is that they had bandanas over their faces. Uh, where are your passengers? I wasn't carrying any. No gold either. Just mail and express and the road agents took all of that. Including a heavy wooden box addressed to you, Padre. It must have been the box from Jim. Mm, in the hands of outlaws, its contents may prove dangerous, my son. Yes, you're right, Padre. Guard dead, Kimasabi. All right, then jump down. Let me come. Now, into the saddle, steady, Silver. Easy. She's got easy, fella. Where do you think outlaws go? It's probable that they're now riding downstream in the creek, trying to cover their trail. Now, why do you say downstream? Because the creek flows rapidly down from the mountains. It's very hard to ride against a swift current, as all Westerners know. Isn't that right? Them fellas bound to be in hurry. The creek winds toward the mission. By taking a shortcut, we may be able to head them off. Diver, you better go on to San Marco and notify the sheriff. Right, I'll be in San Marco within an hour. Get on, get there! Get on! Adios, Padre. Adios. God protect you, my son. Monsilver! Oops, come! As the Lone Ranger and Toto galloped away from the mission... The stage robbers examined their loot on the banks of the creek several miles below the bridge. They were Rawhide Norton and Pony Joe Mills, both wandering outlaws who had no criminal records in that part of the West. Mills shook out the contents of a letter while Norton attempted to open a wooden box. He was saying, Maybe there's some gold in this box. Ways of plenty. Hey, let me give you a hand. Come on, I'm getting part of the top off. 
Here it comes. Well, skin me alive, just look inside. If this horse you take a closer squint at it, huh? Thunderation, it's silver. So are the bullets in those cartridges. Now, we can't sell the stuff while it's in that shape. It'd be a dead giveaway. Hey, we'll store it in our saddlebags. We'll melt the silver into a bar as soon as we find time. Right. Yeah, hold the bags open. I'll dump part of it in each one. Yeah. All right, go ahead. There go the shoes. Hey, Rawhide, where'd that box come from? The sender's name isn't on it. But it must have been expressed from Margantado. That's where the stage line starts. Between there and the bridge, the coaches only stopped to change horses. Yeah, here you go, the bullets. You know, Rawhide, a fellow who can make bullets and horseshoes out of pure silver must have a scared of it around. He'd make rich pick. All right. But how are we going to find it? It may not be so hard. We're not yeah, known yeah. hereabouts, and the stage driver can't identify us. We'll go to Argentado and listen to what's being said about the holder. Good idea, Joe. There'll be a plenty of talk about who lost what. We'll soon find out about this box. Yeah, we better get back into the saddle again. All right, easy, easy boy. <laughs> we'll take to the water and ride downstream a few miles, then circle back to town. All right, come on. Come on. Get it. Get it. Get it. Soon after the outlaws turned their horses into the creek and began following its bed, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached a point much farther downstream. With the return of daylight, the masked man and Indian, who had been riding slowly against the current, pulled up. Oh, sir. What's going Oh, boy. Well, eh? Oh. Outlaws not come this far, Kimasabi. Perhaps we missed them by reaching the creek too late. And then not pass here. Water clear, shallow. We not see where hoofs turn stone or scratch it. And they must have left the creek somewhere ahead of us. Well, banks here plenty low. Make good place to turn out. Look at the upstream bank I'm pointing to, Tonto. Ah, hoof prints there. And where them go? They lead out of the creek and into a ravine. Head your horse out of the water and we'll follow them. Come on, Silver. Get them up, Scott. I'll keep on tracking them through the open ground. You ride through the cedar breaks. Stay well back and keep pace with me. Me savvy. Get him up, Scout. Come on. A few minutes after Tonto disappeared on one side of the ravine, the outlaws circled back on the other, executing the maneuver which the Lone Ranger had foreseen. Reaching the edge of the evergreen screen, they halted their horses. Oh, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hey, you see anything, Rawhide? No. Now, wait. Look, somebody's coming. A mass man. Come on, let's rush him. Come on. Get him! Get him! Pull up there, Kelly! You're coming! Get your hands up! The Lone Ranger, who had anticipated just such an attack, had been riding with his right hand on the butt of a loosened gun. As the stage robbers broke from cover, he drew and fired with a single swift motion. Oh! 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 oh, oh, oh gun oh, fell from his oh, hand oh, as he squawked. Oh, he shot me! You behind him. Drop your gun or you'll get the same. I don't shoot. I'm dropping it. Now, just mount and get your hands up. Sure, anything you say. Easy. Oh, easy. Oh, my wrist. Easy, silly silver. That's only a scratch. Leave it alone. It'll heal fast. Now, I want to know what... Hey, look, coming. Three men. The sheriff's in the lead. There's a star on his vest. No, 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 hold up. Drop that gun, you mash out. Oh, 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 oh. Sheriff, you're making a mistake. I've caught you a couple... caught, you mean. Caught in the act. Now, drop those guns or we're ready. you. Very well. Let's get down, boys. Stay right. there. Right. Yeah. Hank, kick those six shooters out of the owl hoot's reach. All right. There they go. One moment, Sheriff. Do the silver bullets in my gun belt mean anything to you? Silver or lead, they're all the same to me. I know they're made to shoot and kill. The Padre at the mission can tell you about me. We've known each other for a long time. The Padre doesn't know the world. You could have pulled the wool over his eyes. Where's your pardon, fella? Let me explain. I've I... heard enough from you. Grab him, Hank. I got him. Sheriff, you're making a serious mistake. I don't make mistakes. Now, I'll take that mask off your face and handcuff you. As the sheriff reached for the Lone Ranger's mask, Toto, who had been too far away to be of any previous assistance, reached the fringe of the cedar brake. Seeing his friend's danger, he drew back into the evergreens and gave voice to a series of savage war whoops. Hey, what's the matter? At the same time, he emptied his six guns into the ground. Startled by the yells and shouts which seemed to indicate an Indian attack, the sheriff, deputies, and outlaws turned their heads from the masked man and scanned the cedar brake. From the cover of the trees came more war whoops and another burst of firing. What are we up against? Indian. The instant Tonto's trick drew the attention of the three lawmen, the Lone Ranger snatched up his guns and swung into the he's saddle steady. with a sharp command. Steady, Sheriff. Steady, you deputies. I'm taking charge. Hey, he's covering all of us. Why, you... Now drop your guns. That's my friend in the cedar break. Then we haven't got a chance. There goes my gun. 
You better follow suit, boys. That's what we're doing. At that moment, the lawmen and outlaws noticed that the horses they had left ground hitched had stampeded. There go our horses. You better head in the same direction. Come on, boys. Come on, you cowboys. Right. He's letting us off easy. I'm leaving your guns here. By the time you find your horses and get back to your weapons... My friend and I will be out of bullet range. Even if you are, we'll run you down. As soon as the lawman and self-styled cowpokes were far enough away to assure his Come escape, the, the Lone Ranger headed Silver into the cedar brake where Tonto waited. Follow me, Tonto. Sheriff yeah, and his deputies will soon be on our trail. Get up, scout. Why you not bring outlaws along? It's taking too much time to hunt down their horses. And where we go? We'll circle back and go to the mission. Only the Padre can clear us. One, two, three, scout. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When boys line up to run a race, galloping garden sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked, shaped like little round O's, and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk, and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. It was the following day when the Padre returned from San Marco, where he had seen the sheriff on the Lone Ranger's behalf. He found the masked man and Indian waiting outside the mission stables with their horses. Smiling, the venerable priest reported, My son, it is well that I spoke for you. The sheriff was greatly outraged by the ruse which enabled you to escape from him and his deputies. It was only after a long and, um, I fear, a rather heated discussion that I was able to convince him of your innocence. <laughs> Thank you, Padre. Is he holding the real outlaws? Oh, they slipped away from him soon after your escape. Oh, then we have gained nothing. They cannot evade divine retribution. But maybe them kill more people before them die. Better we go after them. Toto, we're not equipped to hunt them now. Yesterday's ride almost wore off Silver's shoes. You used up most of your ammunition in the cedar break. I have only a few cartridges left. And what we do? I'll have to use iron shoes on Silver for the time being. It isn't far to Argentado, so we'll go there first. I'll wait outside the town while you buy cartridges and have Silver shod. We're not likely to lose much time. Oh, well, me savvy. And when we start... Right now, steady, Silver. Steady. Steady. Adios, Padre. Adios, my son. One, A few hours later, Tonto stood in the Argentado blacksmith shop, watching Bert Collins pull off Silver's worn shoes. The smithy was saying, This stallion sure needs a shoeing. Hey, he got one off. That is Silver, Sally. Oh, so that's the horse's name. Hey, Injun. His shoe is Silver, too. Well, what difference that make? None to me. I shoe horses for all kinds of people. I know how to mind my own business. But I'm going to tell you something I heard from Windy Bill. Hey, horse, give me that other hoof. Uh, what Bill feller say? Eh, he said two strangers were at the stage station yesterday when a manager got to talking about a hermit named Old Jim shipping out a heavy box which the holdup men probably took. Oh, me savvy. Eh, off comes another shoe. Well, one stranger wanted to know whether this old Jim ever made any silver horseshoes. Oh, steady, silver, steady. Uh, what... Else, Bill say. Nothing then. But later on, he came back and told me that the strangers had left town, heading for the hills where old Jim is supposed to stay. Yeah, that's the first time I ever heard of silver horseshoes. And this is the first time I ever saw any. Well, better you hurry, Job, now. It was the following day when Jim's trail led Rawhide and Pony Joe into one of the most isolated parts of the West. Oh, 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 I see a horse and mule over there by that hill. A staked out. Yeah. And there's a shack by the side of the hill. Must be old Jim's place. Let's get down and leave our horses behind these rocks. All right, easy, easy boy. <laughs> what do we do, walk right in on it? No. We'll wait for him to come out. Well, 
As he worked at his bench, old Jim talked to himself, as is the habit of many men who live alone. He was saying, Well, I reckon it must be time for supper. First off, I'd better fetch me a pail of water from the spring. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like fresh water. Uh, thunderation is dark already. Get your hands up, fella, front of what, What's this all about? You heard me up with your hands or I'll plug you. Hey, hey I've got him up. Now, back up into your shack. We're coming after you. Hey. All right, that's far enough. Now stand against the wall and stand still. Take his gun, Roy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I've got it. You keep him covered while I search the place. Hey, look at the silver stuff on the bench. Yeah, and I bet he's got more than that. All right, where is it, old man? Now you see all there is. I only mined and smelled all when I needed it. I don't believe you. Hey, Joe, look at what he had stashed in one of these powder cans. Yeah, what is it? Silver dust. That's plenty heavy. I never knew silver came in dust like gold. It doesn't. This must be what he ground off the horseshoes. Be careful, fella. Don't drop that can. It's filled with fulminate of silver. Ful- what? Fulminate. It's a high explosive I use in the percussion caps I put in cartridges. Who ever heard of silver blowing up? We'll melt it down right here in the smell along with the bullets and horseshoes. And none of it can be identified. You fools, you'll kill all of us. I'm getting out of here. Hey, hey Rohan. Hey, dodge me. He's getting away. I'll stop him. You got him. He fell outside by those rocks. Come on, let's take a look. Yeah. I didn't want to kill him so soon. I want to find out whether he had any more silver around. Yeah, here he is. Yeah, only creased his skull. He's still alive. And let's keep him alive and make him talk later on when he recovers consciousness. All right, now we'd better tie and gag him and then carry him back to the shack. What's the use of lugging him all the way back to the shack? He can't yell or get away. Yeah, that's so. All right, we'll just leave him here while we melt down the silver. The Lone Ranger and Toto near the shack, riding fast. We're close to the mine now. Quarter moon coming up. As soon as make light. Better we leave horses here. Scout place and foot. Yes, that's what we'll do. Hold on, hold on. As the masked man and Indian dismounted, they were startled by another sound close at hand. Oh. Somebody groaned. Oh. Where is he? Here, in shadow. It old Jim. Him shot. Is he? No. Dead? No, but him tied and gagged. Heart still beat strong. That's good. The outlaws are inside the shack. Take care of him while I try to find out what they're doing. As the Lone Ranger wormed his way toward the door of the shack, Tonto freed old Jim from his bonds and gag and gave him water. The aged mine keeper groaned again oh. and opened his eyes. Uh, Tonto, you here? Uh, everything be all right now, Jim. Where's our friend? Well, him crawl to shack to see what outlaws do. Tell him to come back. He's going to his death. Outlaws not see him. It isn't the outlaws. It's what they're doing. They may blow up the place any moment. Back, Kimosabi. Back, quick. Come back or you'll be killed. Rawhide, who had been alerted by Jim's yell, rushed to the loophole in the door. Hey, what's happening out there? Somebody was right outside. Now he's running back. Hug him. This will fix him. As Rawhide drew back the hammer of his six gun, a sheet of flame filled the shack. The explosion of the heated fulminate hurled the outlaws against the walls with terrific force, wrecked the smelter and workbench, and blew out the door. The shock of the blast, which woke a hundred echoes among the moonlit hills, and the fierce outward rush of air from the shack, knocked the Lone Ranger from his feet, even though he had reached his own safe from the flying debris. When he rose, he found both Tonto and Jim beside him. You hurt, Kimasabi? Not at all, Tonto. Jim, are you all right? I'm fit as a fiddle, except for a little headache. What happened in the shack? Those owl hoots tried to melt down fulminate of silk. While the Lone Ranger and Jim exchanged stories of the events leading up to the explosion, Tonto went in search of the outlaw's horses. A little later, the smoke cleared from the shattered cabin, permitting the masked man to explore it by candlelight. He soon rejoined Jim with a grim announcement. Well, the killers are dead. The shack will have to be rebuilt and much of your equipment replaced. And that's a small price to pay for getting rid of those varmints. Perhaps Todd and I should remain and help you, Jim. Well, I'll take care of the bodies and dispose of the horses. I can fix up the shack myself. You and Tonto ride on to places where you really need it. Uh, me find horses, Kimasabi. Outlaws had stolen bullets and horseshoes in saddlebags. Me put them in our bags. Good. That supply will take care of my needs for quite a while. By the time you want more, I'll have them. <laughs> Adios, Jim. Adios. Adios, amigos. Well, here's the pail I had when I started to the spring. Blown clear out of the shack. And if it doesn't leak, I'll begin right where I left off and fill it. <laughs> and as I was saying, there's nothing like fresh water. And I'm saying now, there's nobody like the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. 
Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.